Hello, my name is Alex, and today I would like to talk to you about curry. Okay, so not this type of curry, though. We, we actually want to talk about this curry, uh, whose full name is actually Haskell Curry. Uh, Haskell Curry was a mathematician in the beginning of the 20th century uh, who, along with work from others, developed a new way of writing mathematical functions for calculus and uh, linear algebra and various other, like, higher education level mathematics. And the methodology that he sort of created is called the currying function. So today we're gonna cover currying in JavaScript for real world applications. Now, what is currying? Well, let's back up to Haskell curry and talk about math a little bit. So in mathematics, you can express a function as, you know, x equals function of a, b, and c. And so Haskell came up with a way that's mathematically provable where you can assign a function to each argument and have them be called in succession and it will produce the same output. I will be honest with you, I've read the Wikipedia article, I've tried to have somebody explain this to me and I don't have the education background to fully understand this, but just know this is where the idea of currying comes from, is math. Now, in JavaScript, though, currying functions ultimately are just scoped closures, which is great. Uh, we use closures all over the place, all the time. You probably don't even know that you're using them. But that still doesn't explain how to do it in JavaScript. So let's take a look and see how you do it in JavaScript. So in JavaScript, what we would do to write a currying function is we would make a parent function that takes in an argument, we'll say a in this case, and that parent function is going to return sort of a mid function um, that takes an argument of b, right? And then that mid function is going to return another function that takes an argument of c, and that function, when it gets called, will be able to access A, B, and C, and add them all together. So to use it, you would say add three, one, two, three, and it would give you a result of six. Now, most tutorials that I've seen online start with this example. Maybe the way that it's written has changed a little bit, right? And with newer uh, arrow functions, it might be a little bit more condensed, but ultimately, it boils down to this example. And this is a terrible example. It's a good place to sort of give you a simplified view, but if you stop there, it's not useful. I would, if this is bad, this is just patently bad. And if I saw this in a code review, I would have to call you and make sure you're okay, right? Because this is not the way that currying functions should be used. So what is a good currying function? Well, let's talk about currying as a factory pattern or a factory method. So a factory method is a way of creating a generic object, right? You can have it be whatever shape you want to. So rather than defining a class, you're able to just return an object with some properties on it. And if you sort of pair that with uh, being able to do that with functions, you get closures, which we talked about before, where you're able to create values inside of the parent function and have it be uh, returned. Um, and you can access those as sort of private values. So what does this have to do with currying? Well, let's take a look. This is an example of a real currying function that you might find in a code base. We're going to make an authenticated fetch handler for specific APIs. 
So what does this do? Because this is very, very verbose and there's a lot of code in here. Let's break it down. So we start off by creating a parent function that we export called auth fetch stuff factory. You probably want to name this something different, but for example purposes, this is fine. Now, our auth fetch stuff factory is going to take in our authentication token. So at the top level, we're passing in the auth the authentication authorization token that we're using in order to uh, have that available for everything else that's going to be made. Now, inside of that, we're going to make another function called fetch stuff factory, and that one's going to take a URL. So this is the way that we're going to be able to make a fetch handler for a specific URL endpoint. And then inside of that function, we're going to create another method called fetch stuff. This is the thing that's actually going to call fetch and is going to return our fetch value. Uh, it's going to take in an options object. And why we want to take in the options object here is because we now have access to our URL, we now have access to our token, and we can take the headers from the options object, and we can apply our authorization token to our headers. So it'll always be there. And then we, and that token we get from auth fetch stuff factory. And then we're going to return our fetch call, and it's going to use URL from fetch stuff factory, and it's going to use options from fetch stuff. So now this function here, fetch stuff, this whole function is going to get returned by fetch stuff factory. Fetch stuff factory is going to get returned by auth fetch stuff factory. So we have a function that will return a function, which will return a function, which will call fetch. Great. So that is our whole example. Now, at this point, your eyes have glazed over. You are not paying attention anymore. You are just reeling, trying to take in everything that I've just said. That's OK. Take a deep breath. Let's actually use this in practice. We've seen the implementation. So let's actually see how we go about using this, because that's the important part. So let's talk about currying as a factory and actually using it in practice. What we're going to do is that we're going to import our function auth fetch stuff factory, right? That we just made. I just talked you through it. We're going to have a token, which is our very secret token. Um, we have an endpoint that we want to connect to that requires authorization. And then we're going to call auth fetch stuff factory. We're going to provide the token. We're going to provide the endpoint. And then we can call it, and it'll do a fetch call. And this is, there you go, that's your example. This is also a very bad example. And the reason why this is a very bad example is because it's exactly the same example as I did before, only now we're making a fetch call instead of adding things together. This does not explain how to use it. So let's actually use it in a real way. So this is going to be our fetch file. From this file, we're going to export API handlers, where you can call a specific API endpoint that you want. So we're going to get our auth fetch stuff factory, and we're going to get a new function that I imagine exists is called get token that will come from your auth provider. Maybe that's Google, maybe that's auth zero, maybe it's um, super base, I don't know. But it'll be a function, it'll return a string that is the current authorization token. Then we're going to make our auth fetch factory that will have our token available to it. And then we're going to export all of the APIs that we want to be able to call. So in this case, I want fetch users to be able to get API slash users and fetch reports to be able to get API slash reports. And that is, that is our whole auth fetch file. To use this properly now in our component or JavaScript or whatever you have, we can now import fetch users from auth fetch and just fetch users. So now we've made something that is reusable and it does one specific thing, but it has all of this information previously handed to it. And this, this is a good example. This is a great example. So currying functions. You shouldn't use them for everything because they're only needed in a specific use case. 
but you should use them when you want to be able to reuse some code. You don't need to chain function calls all over the place, but if you need to create a repeatable handler for something, this is a great way of doing it. And the last fact that I didn't really cover before, but I feel like it's very important is to remember that only occur it's only a currying function if it's from the currying region of mathematics. Otherwise, it's really it's just a spicy closure. I'm Alex Revere. Thank you for watching.